Hello everybody, welcome back to another dev blog update, and today we're just going to be looking at some of the cool new things that I've done. Um, no, I don't want, why is this, I don't want it full screen, smaller please, thank you. Alright, so let's go to the beautiful, beautifulness that is this icon, this needs to be redone, this looks like complete garbage. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and open up devblog02. Um, you know, completely do not look at what you just didn't see there because it doesn't matter. It's not important. It doesn't exist. Um, I used to have this whole really nice thing built. And then I changed the names of every single object. So everything is gone. So, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and take a look at this. These are the, some of the new, mo uh, nodes I have added to the spawn mod. So we have, again, this is, this whole mod, honestly, if you're not planning on using this as a server, you may want to just delete from the sub game because none of this stuff's getting craft recipes. It's all just stuff that I'm gonna, put in manually and uh yeah i wish it was an easy way to get rid of that stuff and uh so they won't have craft receipts they won't be craftable um they're not gonna be breakable once the spawn location is built how i want it but uh yeah so we have these are all completely 100 percent by scratch made by me and i really like this one i really like it the blinking lights on the bottom the little radar spinning around, the blips fading as they go on. By far my favorite. Uh, this one's kind of eh. You got three checks that are not passing. These bottom two pass. And then we have one here that's just blinking on and off error. So let's take a quick peek at the code used to create those. Um, they're very simple nodes. They don't do anything. There's no right click on them. Um... They do light up a little bit, light source of two, light source of three, and a light source of two. Um, I believe the one with the light source of three is, oh, it's the one with the bright green screen. That one lights up a little bit more than these two do, just because it does have that big screen on the top. And uh, yeah, they're just plain simple, and they have three textures. There's a texture for the face, which is the same on all of them, which I'm not 100% happy with. That'll probably end up changing, as will so much of this. Texture for the sides and the backs. Let me go ahead and move that one. Is all the same, and then there's the top texture. So there's three textures per note here. And you'll see we have the floor is actually the texture we're using for the sides and the back. The top is an animated one. So just the name of the file and then animation. Vertical frames, because they run up and down. Aspect width and height, they're 32 by 32 pixels, and the length is how many seconds elapse between frame updates. So, you will see here on console number three, we have a length of four, whereas the other two are both lengths of one. So the one that happens every four seconds, theoretically, is this one here, blinking error. And this one updates once a second, and that one changes once a second, which honestly, that I might change to be two seconds because that looks like it's maybe blinking just a little too fast yeah I think that's better and then this one is every second so that's pretty neat um the other thing I got added in is the lights I should have just left this running um, and this is a pretty creative oh, I got so much junk can't drop unknown items. Okay, what you can do is use the pulverize, pulver, oh, why can't I spell? Yeah, I know that's wrong. Pulverize. There we go. And then whatever item is in your hand will be pulverized. And you can use the up arrow to pull up a previous command or chat message. I need to get some kind of an inventory thing where I can just clear inventory with a button. 
this whole player UI needs to be redone. This is actually pretty much just ripped straight from default. My test game. As in. So that needs to be changed, but that'll come in time. Give me spawn tube underscore light. I'm going to take five of those and we're going to go ahead and do give me spawn tube light underscore bad. And I'll take five of those as well. These both use the exact same meshes and the exact same textures. And this is the bad one, which places and doesn't work. Mmm, and it's definitely a bad light. Whoa, it blinked on. Oh, and it's dead again. Oh man, I hate these bad lights. They're so annoying. Oof, ooh, it's on. Oh, it's so bright. My eyes. Ah, oh, dead again. So this is going to be for like some corridors in portions of the ship that are kind of like broken down and stuff. There'll be these bad lights which blink. And then there's the good light. So let me just place on the other side, which is always at full brightness. And now the neat thing about this is when you place the good light, it stays good forever. But the bad light. Okay, so we're pointing at you can see up on the top here. Uh, wait, now you can see up on the top. We are pointing at spawn tube light bad. When this thing turns on, there we go. Oh, it was on for a second. It turns into the good tube light. Let me explain how that code works. So we register two nodes here. We have the tube light and we have the tube light, which is the bad one. And the good light has an on timer function, which basically when this position, which is the position of the node, gets the, I don't, I'll just call it the timer signal that executes this code. So when the timer, imagine an egg timer and it's got that little bell that dings at the end. When that timer dings, it runs this code. So it picks a random number between 3 and 15 and then starts another timer with whatever that length was and it sets the node to the bad light which is turned off. So this code here will never execute if you place this light out because there's nothing ever starting a timer other than the on timer. The bad light however on construct. So this is Pretty much when it's placed in the world, when it's constructed, when that node be begins its existence, more or less, it creates a timer that lasts for 10 seconds. So your first instance of the bad light will always be off for 10 seconds. And then when that bell rings, the timer runs, it switches the node to the good light, and it also starts a timer with something from 1 to 3 seconds as a random number. So the good light will be on for one to three seconds, and then it turns back to the bad light. And that's how that works. Pretty neat. Um, I like it. It's a nice effect. I've actually seen somebody else do something similar. I don't know if they were using um, timers or ABMs or what they were using to blink the lights on and off. There's, from what I've seen of it in the limited experience I had with it, um, it just looked like it pretty much blinked on and off once a second or it would blink on for a second then it was off for a few and it looked like it just kept using the same time i could be wrong it was on a server and uh i didn't really like study the light to see how it was working because i really wasn't too worried about it i just when i was working on this code i was like you know i remember that light and that was pretty neat so i i did this to make my own replica and now let's look at some of the new spawn nodes so what I did here is I created several new uh, files. So I have one file for the floor parts. Uh, we have one for the objects, which is the ladder, the consoles, the lights. We have rails and we have walls, which so far only has two things and neither of which are very great. This right here is spawn wall, that texture needs to be completely redone. I don't know what I want to do with that. Uh, that's supposed to be like the spaceship walls for inside passages and stuff. I don't really like how that looks. And then um, the other one, I don't think I have any place. I don't even know if it's set up correctly right now. Yeah, it's still messed up. No, actually that is right. So we have this 
this um, window, basically, corner of a window. And the idea is, oh, that doesn't even work. Well, that's dandy, because they're offset. Uh, you'll have to end up using the screwdriver, but you, you rotate them, and then this one would be sloping that way, this one this way, and it'll give you a 45 degree angle for the windows instead of square. I don't know, I thought it was a neat idea. Uh, screwdriver mod I have not copied over yet, and it pretty much will just be a direct copy. I tried grabbing the um, creative inventory from my test game, but... I kept getting dependency issues, so I was like, eh, you know what, I'm just gonna, just gonna not have it, and you know what I'm gonna do, I'm going to create a new world, and just because I didn't feel like pulverizing every single item in my inventory, because I'm lazy, ooh, wow, that's weird because it didn't have these issues before did it could not load all of these images yeah whatever there's a lot of work that needs to be done let's take a look at some of the the rails and the floors so everything here uses a really weird naming system um, it's available in four colors I believe in the last video I showed you guys the rails and some of the floor edges I just did a little bit of touch-up work on them so everything's working in the four colors now. We have, oh wait, that's actually in this file. We have pink, green, blue, and yellow. And I made that as a global table for the mod because Rails uses it and the floors use it. And I didn't feel like putting the table in twice, which I could have done, but it's like, eh, why bother? So let's try to get one of these. First, I'm going to need to do grant single player all. And then give me spawn. Okay, and the name for the rail is going to be a one-letter color descriptor. So pink will be P. And then if we want the angle of the rail, it's RA. So here we have a rail that goes on an angle and has some little pink lights on it. And we could do the same thing with a blue one. Or... We have a green one. And last but not least, we have an orange one, which oddly in... Or is it yellow? There we go. It's yellow. Uh, I guess it does look yellow, not orange. Wait, doesn't the... Isn't the description of it say it's orange? No, it does say yellow. Okay. Is that still saying orange? Wrong one, wrong one. Oh, it's colorized orange, but it, okay. So yeah, we have those different colored rails. Rails are available in angles, in straights, and a double-sided, which again, I think I showed last time. And the floors, the new thing for the floor is the ramps. Which, let me see, I really need to get that creative inventory setup working because it's Annoying to have to keep typing all this out. Give me spawn ramp one. Yeah, and then we'll just do ramp two. Now this is just the floor colored one. So just a, a ramp that takes two slopes to get to the top. Uh, it's also available in colors. Which is here someplace, but again, the whole naming system is kind of screwy on this stuff. <laughs> okay, so I want to do give me spawn. Um, we will do blue, and then we want a ramp top right, so it's R two R R two R, and that gives me the top node with the line on the right. So let's go ahead and get the bottom so we change the two to the one okay and then let's do a yellow and let's do a left is that not right 
left. Oh, because I changed the wrong one. Again, this is why this needs to change. Okay, so that's ramp, and this is left here. And then we want to do the same thing, but change that to piece number two. And we will place that one there, and this one here. So you can make the ramp as wide as you want, and just have the two colored ribbons on the edges. And those edge ones light up just a teeny tiny bit, I think. Or do they? Yeah, they do. Light source of two. Actually, it looks like all the floor pieces light up with a light source of two. Which, honestly, let's change this to a light source of one, just for kicks and giggles. I don't think you even notice a difference. Hmm, no, not really. Um, but basically, the idea is that the only thing you really notice lighting up is that little ribbon. So, like, in a pitch black room, when the light is flickering and it's broken, you'll still see that little edge and you'll see your rails. Now there are no rails for the ramps as of yet. I hadn't actually even thought about those till I just mentioned it. That may be something I want to add in. I don't know. Uh, so we have those. I think that's really about it. Oh, there's stairs too. Uh, right here, stairs. I think I showed the ladder in the last video. Uh, let's do, give me spawn stairs. Oh, let's do five of those. Now these are, I don't know, work in progress because they're stylized a little bit in that they have this little angly slope to make them, you know, whatever, a little, little fancier looking. But that leaves an exposed bit of the node from the underside. And I don't have a full node that can fill those spaces right now. I have, uh, what is it? Give me... I think it's just called floor. Yeah, but this is, it looks like it's a different color. I don't know if maybe one lights up and one doesn't, and that's why they look different. But in either case, this is really meant to go with the wall corner pieces, which would be, oh, let's see, spawn. And let's go to floors here and we would want uh, I guess I'll just do P-E-I-C. Inside corner. Yeah, so that's... If you wanted to have this sticking out a little further from the wall, because your edge pieces have this slope on the underside. And this is the same thickness as the other node at the bottom. And obviously at the top. So it gives it a smooth running on the underside. But yeah, it doesn't really match up with that. So I don't, I don't know exactly what my plan is. I could honestly take the stair and just make the mesh stick back. It's that tenth of a node or eighth of a node, whatever it is. And have it slope down the backside. And that would work just fine. You would potentially see some Z buffering issues where the two nodes intersect. I don't know. I don't know on that for sure yet. That's something I'm still kind of trying to figure out what I want to do with. And I think that's honestly about it as far as changes have gone. It was basically just kind of getting the spawn stuff here organized a little neater. I don't think I really added anything in. I did add uh, a license file, which basically is just all of the mods and then the code and the media licensing so for the gamer file that's pretty much ripped directly out of my test game from default um skin will be changed i'm just too lazy and haven't gotten around to that yet currently you have the default my test skin uh, i don't know exactly what i'm going to change it to it is going to be a higher resolution um and yeah i haven't gotten any sound effects for anything at all so those all have to be made and defined, and yeah, it's a big project, a huge project. But that's all right. I'm not setting this server up till I make enough money from YouTube to pay for it. So I'm sure we have a long time before that happens. So no worries, no worries. Code, of course, is on GitHub. 
link on my website and in the description. Uh, one thing to note though, these videos are all recorded like six or seven weeks in advance. So by the time this video goes live, the code on GitHub is going to be way past what you're seeing here. It's kind of just what happens when I record these videos in bulk on weekends and then spread them out and spread them and spread them and spread them. I got stuff to the, it's, well, this will be, I think, going live like late June and it's the beginning of May right now. So, yeah, and I know I've mentioned that in the past, but just keep that in mind. If there's code that's broken and you go on GitHub, it could be completely different because it's, these videos are all old recordings. What you gonna do though? You know, what you gonna do? Anyway, that wraps this up. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.